Welcome back. In this tutorial we are going to shed some light on the test case execution. After we run our test case, SAP PIPO processes the message provided by IFTT, but it treats it as though it has been sent by the original third-party system. As it is fully transparent for the SAP PIPO, it can verify all of the components that the interface is built of. Routing rules, message mappings, lookups and BPM on the PIPO side. We also validate all the processing that takes place in the backend, which includes the standard code, custom ABAP code and the system configuration. The new message sent by the IFTT has been modified thanks to the XPath expressions, which are a part of IFTT's configuration. The XPath expressions point to the business document ID. A new number from the appropriate number range has been attributed to the document. This is a precaution against consuming a number that would be actually used by the third-party system, the one we simulate. Now we enter IFTT's main screen. We select a single test case and execute it. In the message monitor we can see that the message sent through the IFTT looks exactly the same as if it has been sent by the third-party system. A new IDOC has been created, triggering the creation of the new source order. We can check the cells order here, and we can clearly see it has got a completely new ID number. This document has been created as a result of the interface testing. Now IFTT is going to automatically compare this document with the original version, the one we used to create the test case. Here we can see the results. This is the visual representation of the cells order in the database. What we are looking at now are in fact two documents. The light shaded rows are those of the original document, while dark shaded rows are those of the new document created during the test case execution. Now let's break some message mappings. We are about to emulate a context handling issue, as those are the most difficult ones to find. In this view we can see that our changes led to inconsistencies between compared documents. The main difference is the number of items. Those empty spaces indicate that the item was present in the original document, but it is nowhere to be found in the new source order. While the red color highlights errors, the yellow color is used for marking warnings. A warning rises when IFTT finds values that for some reason may vary between the old and the new document. For example, the total value of cells order may differ from the original document due to the number of items, which would normally be considered as an error but it also could differ due to pricing changes made after the test case creation. This way we don't have to recreate our test cases each time a change in master data or pricing is performed. However, those criteria are a part of IFTT's configuration and can be changed accordingly. Right now a developer has traced the issue and takes care of the broken message mapping. Thanks to the IFTT he can test the mapping and confirm its correctness without the need of knowing all the business logic behind. IFTT handles multiple test cases execution, which allows to test all the possible business scenarios. What greatly helps dealing with such an amount of results is the summarized view. It displays a shortened report for each executed test case. If you deal with a large number of test cases on a regular basis, you will surely find it reassuring that IFTT allows to run multiple test cases in the background, testing your interfaces 24-7. Thank you for watching. You will find more video tutorials on int4.com.